in my view, you're likely to see the greatest fall off and where you've had the biggest bubble or the ones uh, tend to be the high end market and they tend to be ones where people have bought for investment or speculation uh, rather than use. History might be about to repeat itself and this time it could be even worse. Warren Buffett has rang the alarm bells. He thinks we are going towards a huge crisis, even bigger than the 1929 Wall Street crash or the Great Recession of 2008. It has been uncovered that the United States has borrowed an enormous debt of $1.4 trillion in just the first nine months of fiscal year 2023, with $228 billion borrowed in June alone. These numbers spell potential disaster for our economy. And now, all eyes are on Warren Buffett for advice. Let's hear what he has to say about this looming economic crisis. But it all has consequences, and, and I think we're, we're about... Well, we are starting to see the consequences of people who could borrow at 2.5% and find out it doesn't work at current rates, and they hand it back to somebody that gave them all the money they needed to build it. A real estate bubble forms when housing prices are driven up, not by the actual value of the properties, but by other factors such as speculation and excessive borrowing. Over the past 15 years, the U.S. has seen exactly this kind of scenario. Interest rates are at historically low levels, so it has been incredibly cheap for people and businesses to borrow money. This influx of easy money has led to a lot of buying. And can you guess what happened next? The property prices have gone up to levels that don't really match their true worth. Let's apply this to a practical example. Consider there is a young couple looking to buy a house. They find out that one is priced at $300,000. Now, with low interest rates, they can secure a mortgage easily. They only need a small down payment and the monthly payments are affordable. This is how low rates make it possible for more people to buy homes, and this ultimately leads to increased demand and drives prices up. Now, imagine this happens across the entire country. It's easy to see how a bubble forms. However, the real risk comes when interest rates start to rise. Let's say the couple's mortgage has a variable rate, which means their payments increase as interest rates go up. If their income does not grow at the same pace, they might struggle to meet the higher payments. If they default, their house goes back to the bank. The commercial real estate market is affected in a similar way. A business owner might buy a property for a business when interest rates are low, but if those rates climb, their loan repayments increase. When this is combined with economic challenges like a downturn or less demand for physical store space, they might not be able to keep up with payments. As more and more people and businesses are unable to pay their mortgages or loans, the market could see a surge in foreclosures. This floods the market with properties, causing prices to drop sharply. Suddenly, properties are worth less than what people paid for them, leading to lost equity and financial distress. In this way, the bubble, which was created by a combination of low interest rates, high borrowing, and inflated property values, is at serious risk of bursting. This would not only lead to individual hardships, but could also trigger a wider economic crisis. Most people like to buy with non-recourse in, in, yeah. in real estate. And, and uh, one time I asked Charlie, I'm, uh, there was some real estate guy we were talking to, and you know, how do they decide how much they can a building like this is worth? And it's, the answer is, it's whatever they can borrow without signing their name. And you need to be aware of what non-recourse debt is if you're dealing in real estate, especially in big deals like buying office buildings or malls. Basically, it means if you borrow money to buy a building and things don't go well, you can give the building back to the bank and walk away without owing more money. It is the same if you bought a car on a special deal, but then you can't pay for it so you just return the car and don't owe anything else. This kind of deal sounds great for the person borrowing the money, right? But it is risky for the banks. Warren Buffett talked about how this is pretty common in real estate. People borrow loads of money because the interest rates are low, thinking they won't have to pay much. But if those rates go up, or if the building is not worth as much anymore, they can just hand the keys back to the bank. In this situation, the bank cannot do anything other than foreclosing on the house. The law also prohibits the bank from taking any further action to get the remaining payments. Buffett pointed out that when a lot of people do this, it shakes up the whole market. 
If everyone starts returning buildings to the banks, there will be too many buildings for sale, and prices will drop. Think of it like if everyone in your town tries to sell their car at the same time, the price of cars would go down. So, while non-recourse loans might seem like a good idea because they are less risky for buyers, they can mess up the economy in the long run, which is happening right now. The consequences are so serious that they can even cause an economic crisis. Warren Buffett once said to investors, Be fearful when others are greedy and greedy. money. They get greedy, lending out loads to local businesses and homeowners when times are good. But good times never last forever. When the real estate market starts to crumble, these banks quickly find themselves in deep water. They have put so much into one area that when property prices drop or people cannot pay their loans, the banks are hit hard. For example, think about a small bank in a town that has lent money to half the businesses on Main Street. If property values drop or businesses are not doing well, these loans might start to go bad. This is risky for a bank because if too many loans go bad, the bank could default. And this is not just a theory. Apart from the 2008 crisis, we have seen this happen in other downturns too. Like during the saving and loan crisis in the 1980s, a lot of smaller banks faced huge problems because of bad real estate loans. It is a pattern that tends to repeat itself in tough economic times. Small and medium businesses feel this impact directly. If their local bank is struggling, getting loans can be much harder. They might need money for new equipment, hiring more staff, or just keeping the lights on. But if the bank is tightening its belt, these businesses could be left in a tough spot. What we are witnessing is a real-time illustration of this ripple effect. In some areas, loan approval rates for small businesses have dropped significantly. We have seen declines of 10 to 15% recently. This means one out of two of the 10 businesses applying for loans are being turned away. When local businesses won't be able to grow, there will be fewer jobs and less money will be spent. It's like a chain reaction. The bank struggles, businesses cannot get money, people have less work, and everyone feels the pinch. I'm not buying stocks. I'm buying pieces of overwhelmingly American business. Uh, and I'm happy when that's happy, when that's uh, when I'm doing it. I'm happy when stocks are going down. I'm happier when stocks are going down because I, I, I can buy more of them with the same amount of money. The stock market is not looking much better either. Big names like Tesla have seen their stock tumble down by 13.2% in just one month, and they're not alone. Alphabet has dropped by 5%, and Nvidia is also down by 2.8%. These are not just tiny dips. They are signs of bigger trouble coming our way. A lot of this shakeup comes from the recent jumps in interest rates. In the past, even smaller hikes in rates have messed up the economy, and now we are seeing something much deeper. Fannie Mae is already predicting an economic downturn in the first half of 2024. So, who is controlling these rate changes? It is the Federal Reserve. Since March of 2022, they have been raising rates going from a mere 0.25% to a whopping 5.5% in a series of increases. And right now, it is a bit of a guessing game about what they will do next. This uncertainty is making everyone in the stock market pretty nervous. Warren Buffett once said, interest rates are to stock prices what gravity is to an apple. Just like gravity pulls an apple down, higher interest rates can pull stock prices down. They make borrowing more expensive, and that can slow down spending and investment, which are fuel for many of these big companies' growth. Looking ahead to 2024, we can expect the stock market to keep feeling this pressure. Companies that rely heavily on borrowing might find the going tough. I can't predict recessions. If you guaranteed me there would be a recession next year, I would be buying and selling the same securities I'm buying and selling today. In these uncertain times, the golden rule of investing is understanding that you cannot predict market downturns. It is like trying to guess when the next big wave is going to hit the shore. You might get lucky once or twice, but that is not a reliable strategy. The key is to stick to your financial plan. If you're feeling uneasy about stocks, 
consider shifting some of your portfolio cash into longer dated bonds. These can be a safer harbor when the stock market gets choppy. For real estate, you have to be a bit cautious. If you are thinking of buying property, make sure that it is for the right reasons and not just because prices are rising. In a bubble, what goes up can come crashing down. If you are already invested, keep an eye on the market trends and be prepared to adjust your strategy. And remember, even Warren Buffett keeps buying during downturns. He sees them as opportunities, not just threats. Recessions will come and go, but if you were too scared to invest, you might miss out on the good times too. So, Take a page from Buffett's playbook and view challenging times as a chance to grow your portfolio. What are your predictions for next year? Do you foresee a crisis on the horizon? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below.